Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. These videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and show people that there is life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To my returning viewers, I'm glad to have you back. Today's experience was posted anonymously to the IN's website. In the experience, the person drowns on a hot summer day. While in heaven, he meets some of his dead relatives and speaks to them before his angel tells him it is time to go home. Get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's dive into today's narration. One summer, when the temperature soared above 105 degrees, my brother pleaded and convinced my mother and my other two sisters to go to the Comal River in order to escape the unbearable Texas heat. Although my mother was a bit hesitant, she understood the need for respite. We ventured to the Comal River, which was located nearby New Braunfels, Texas. To keep this story concise, hundreds or perhaps even thousands of Texas teens disregarded the warning signs and swarmed over the fence, ignoring the dangers that lay ahead. Some teens daringly leaped off the bridge into the river from a height of about 20 feet or more. The scorching heat during that time was truly unbearable. Imagine people walking on hot rocks or a scalding sidewalk, hopping to avoid burning their bare feet. One afternoon, when I was around 10 years old, it was easy for friends or family members to become separated due to the river's strong currents, potentially getting lost. I was pulled towards the side and quickly grabbed onto the sidewalk, eventually reaching a ladder that allowed me to climb out. However, I searched for my brother and sisters in vain. I decided to walk towards a smaller dam, which appeared less dangerous than the first one. Despite its significant water flow, with the water falling about four to six feet, I believed it was manageable. As I began walking, I slipped due to the slippery algae. Fortunately, being a proficient swimmer, I remained calm, but remained acutely aware of the powerful current. I attempted to swim against the current, desperately trying to move my body away. Unfortunately, I got caught in an undertow and struggled to swim out. Disoriented, I couldn't determine which direction was up, down, right, or left. Panic set in, and fear consumed me. I screamed for help, my thoughts fixated on my mother and family. Water entered my mouth, causing me to stop breathing. My body felt icy cold, and my mind started to shut down. Darkness enveloped everything around me. At that moment, I realized that the door to life had closed on me. I wondered if this was the experience of death. Was this it? Then, I lost consciousness. Suddenly, my body was jolted by electric currents, starting from my feet and surging all the way to my head. The sensation left me awestruck. Immediately after, my life unfolded before me in a series of rapid flashes, like scenes from a movie, year by year, person by person. The first flash that stood out was the moment of my birth, witnessing my mother's beautiful face for the first time in my life. I hadn't realized the depth of my mother's love for me. The second flash depicted the joy I felt playing with my brother and sisters, experiencing the closeness we shared. The third flash showed my father tossing my body up in the air, eliciting laughter and a sense of curiosity. Then, the flashes accelerated, and countless stars seemed to burst inside my head and body. It was surreal. Subsequently, I saw a light at the end of a tunnel racing towards me. My spirit or soul became encapsulated within the tunnel of light, and I soared through it. Even to this day, I vividly recall the indescribable sensation. The only comparison I can draw is to the movie Contact, where the protagonist enters a tunnel in a newly built ball spacecraft, hurtling through a giant gyro space machine. Similarly, as I zoomed through the tunnel, I could perceive the transparency revealing glimpses of the universe. It was an awe-inspiring experience, flying through the tunnel at light speed. Eventually, I reached a boundary, hovering near it as my body floated. I was taken aback by the immense burden lifted off my shoulders as if countless absurd rules and regulations imposed by governments and churches were removed. Simultaneously, I experienced a surge of what can only be described as the conscience of laws, although words fail to fully capture the essence of that experience. 
It felt akin to a hurricane drawing all energy towards the eye of the storm. An overwhelming sensation of gathering knowledge and understanding from genuine beings into my body and mind. One instance stands out from when I approached the boundary. No explanation was necessary for me to comprehend, even at the age of 10, that crossing the boundary meant there was no return. Despite my excitement to cross, my attention was diverted by my ancestors on the other side of the boundary. They engaged in telepathic conversation, which fascinated me. Being profoundly deaf, born into a hearing family who all knew sign language, I could communicate with about 20 ancestral figures, both from my lineage and others, using telepathy. It was an overwhelming experience, discovering that I could communicate with so many people simultaneously. I witnessed a mysterious community with picturesque scenery and structures clearly not constructed by humans, but rather by some supernatural builder. This megacity was nearly perfect and flawless, captivating me through my ancestral connection. One of my grandmothers, or perhaps great-grandmothers, or even great-great-grandmothers, expressed surprise and bewilderment at my arrival at the boundary. Their astonishment was evident, as they hadn't expected me. Nevertheless, they embraced me with open arms, welcoming me to join them. One of my ancestors communicated telepathically, questioning why I was there and whether it was my time yet. Another radiated an aura of love and joy upon seeing me, offering glimpses of our new future. Words fail me as I attempt to describe what I witnessed. Apologies, but I struggle to find the appropriate words. In a mere instant, an angel approached me with determination and posed the question, what are you doing here? I was taken aback by his inquiry. Upon my first encounter with my guardian angel, I sensed that he had been there when my mother gave birth to me. He had shared in the joy and considered my birth a completed task in his listing. I regarded him with profound inspiration, feeling an incredible closeness. Yet he extended his hand, pushing me away. Through telepathy, he inquired about what had happened. Oblivious to the events, I was overflowing with joy and love. I yearned to cross the boundary immediately. Firmly, my angel approached me and scanned me, effortlessly seeing through me, aware that I had drowned. I was shocked that he could discern this by merely scanning me without the need for conversation. Assertively, my guardian angel stated, Your time is not up yet. You have unfinished business to attend to. Go back. Initially, I attempted to brush it off and sidestep him but he moved swiftly and extended his hand toward me. I felt my body being forcefully pulled backward at incredible speed. The light of the tunnel receded from my vision, and I was abruptly thrust back into my body as if slapped by invisible hands. I once again felt the presence of my physical body and couldn't fathom why I was still inside it. I awoke, realizing that I was still in the water, and I had the sensation of having breathed in water, even though it wasn't the case. A voice commanded me to stand straight and firm. Without hesitation I obeyed, and a large hand enveloped my body, lifting me out of the swift current. I was propelled to the edge of the land, where I grasped for stability. Emerging from the water, I expelled all the water from my body onto the land, amazed by the amount that had entered and exited. From that moment onward, my life and perspective underwent a profound transformation. I knew I would never be the same person again. I caught a glimpse of my life ahead, and as I forcefully expelled water from my mouth, I was struck by intense emotions. I was filled with hope and love, and I felt connected to nature and those around me. I never shared my experience with my mother, brother, or sisters. Something deep inside urged me to keep it to myself. All I felt was an ever-enveloping enlightenment, an incredible experience beyond earthly comprehension. It felt as though I stood at the twilight door, observing the unfolding of the sixth or seventh dimension door of the future. I encountered numerous visions and dreams, some pleasant and others terrifying, but I'll conclude here. By the way, my parents, brother and sisters learned about my experience when I turned 31 years old. I felt the timing was right to disclose the truth. My mother was utterly shocked, and it profoundly impacted her. My sisters looked at me, ran towards me, and embraced me tightly. They couldn't fathom a life without me. I simply smiled. That does it for today's experience. If you were to have an NDE, who would you like to see on the other side? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next time, stay safe and be blessed. Be.
Time to thank the channel donors. Let's get to it. Marcus, Sir Richard, and Neria. I hope that I pronounced this right. Thank each of you for your kindness in supporting the channel and to donors and non-donors alike. Thank you all for continuing to watch my videos.